salutations, my friends, and welcome to a new video. Today, I bring you a good old challenge slash tag. Now, I love doing these every once in a while because it's a very fun way to talk about books without necessarily giving you guys like specific recommendations or making a reading vlog. It's like a competition with myself. It's technically not something that I need to win. In my head, though, I am gearing up for the fight. I am gearing up for the win. And so I am competing with myself today, ladies and gentlemen. It is my time to win. So I do stand every bit the chance to lose. I don't know if that translates the same from Spanish to English, pero tengo todas las que perder. So welcome to the How Well Do I Know My Books Challenge. Now, this video was originally done a while back by Jesse the Reader, and I really miss old tag and challenge videos. I don't see them as often anymore, obviously, in the same way that we used to. And so I am here with this one today to just have a little bit of fun with my shelves and to peruse them, browse them, see if I know my books as well as I think I do. But again, tengo todas las que perder. I really have not read every single book that is currently on my shelves. There is about, I think, 60% of them are read. 40% of them are not. That ratio could completely be wrong. But in my head, I'd love to think that I have read most of my books. And so for today, we have got a series of questions that all involve not looking at the books, but picking books and answering these questions to see if I know them again, as well as I think I do. So for this one, I ask for you guys as help because I need obviously a way to find the books on my shelf. So I went to Instagram actually a while back and I asked you guys to leave me three different numbers, one from one through six, meaning you choose one of my shelves. I've got six of them. And then another number from one to six, meaning which shelf, because all of the units currently have six shelves each. And then another number from one through 20, because almost every shelf has about 20 books, except obviously for the smaller ones and the smaller billies. So we are here. Let us see if Mel knows her shelves and let us get right started with it. I am always astounded with the amount of responses you guys leave, because honestly, I could scroll on for a really long time and it'd take us a while to get to the bottom of this thing because you guys left quite a bit of numberage. And so thank you so much for everybody that answered. For the first question though, let's start this competition with myself. Without looking, tell us what this book is about. Let us go for 3, 2, 16. Easy says, okay, so we have got Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, which by the way, George, if you're here listening and watching, when are you going to finish out the series? I'd love to know. Not that I've even read this first one. I started, but I haven't finished it. On this one, I'm going to go based on the show because it's really the only piece of real media of this that I've consumed outside of video essays and theories. So I've not yet read the actual book series. So in this particular first installment, we start out with the king losing his most trusted advisor. And in an effort to replace said dead hand for another good trusted advisor, the king enlists the help of one of his bestest of friends, his closest of friends, Lord Eddard Stark from the Starks that rule over Winterfell. So he is tasked with going to King's Landing, which is the capital of Westeros, to help the king in this new role, whilst all other things get chaotic as well. Winter is coming, the Targaryens are resurfacing, and everybody wants to vie for the throne, as always. And so I really need to get to the book because, again, the only thing I've consumed of this is the show. I feel like this next one is a cheat because it is talking about genres. All of my shelves are organized by genre, but without looking it up, what is the genre of this book? Ooh, 1313. This is shelf number one right here at the corner. And so number three is this one. All of these are literary fiction slash historical fiction. So I already kind of know what we're getting ourselves into. We have got Kim Yi Young, born 1982. This is a literary fiction. To my understanding, it could very well be something else. But from my understanding, it's just a literary fiction that explores a very common name in Korea, Kim Yi Young, and how despite Kim Yi Young is a very popular name, and how despite this name representing a lot of women, how all of these women are different in their own right is my understanding of this book. But yeah, literary fiction. I think this one's going to be quite exciting, but without looking at the book, tell us what is on the cover. So for this one, let us go for 4, 5, 15. I just realized I picked a really small shelf, also known as this shelf right here, this one. I'm going to have to double count five here at the bottom. I'm going down. I'm going to count. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it this way. It's the Rise of Kiyoshi. So without looking at the cover, <laughs> I think it has a Kiyoshi on the cover. <laughs> and probably maybe flowers on the cover, maybe some sort of like elemental stuff on the cover. And color wise, if we care, I think it has gold. I think it has red. I think, oh, I can't remember if it's this one or the second one. I know one of them has a green, I think. Oh wait, this one's the green one. Okay, green and yellow. 
yellow and black. I didn't fully guess what was on the cover, but I mean, Kiyoshi is in here. And then the headpiece is gold. Okay, I do kind of know. Is the second one, oh wait, no, it does have red. The makeup is red. Is the second one the red? Okay, yeah, the second one is the red one. I was like, I know for sure one of these is red. Kind of know that one. Without looking it up, what is the main character's name? I don't, I don't trust myself for this one unless it is something that I've read in the past, but for this one, let us go with an angel number. I think that could be quite fun. Two, two, two. So let us shift you guys over to this side because shelf number two is this one. So The Damned by Renee Adier. What is the main character's name? Her name, it's gotta be something French. She comes from France. I don't know why I'm thinking Cecile. I feel like that's wrong. Her name is, oh God, is the, is the love interest name Sebastian? I swear I cannot muster up this character's name for the life of me. Camille, Camila. No, Josephine. <laughs> I keep getting stuck on Josephine. I know that's not her name. Like I know for sure Josephine is not her name. To seal, it sounds kind of right, but I don't think that's right either. I'm gonna have to open the book because I honestly don't remember. Okay, so the, the guy's name is Sebastian. I know that much. And then her name, Celine. I was so close. Potato, potato, some would say. <laughs> totally not. And it gets harder without looking, name a side character. So for this one, let us go with 1515. I can do one five fifteen. Guys, I think we're in trouble. <laughs> it's the thriller shelf. It's the plot. I have not read this book. Okay, wait, I can't look at it. What would a side character be called? There could be a John, there could be a Paul, there could be a Brian. Me just thinking of white names. There could be an Anthony. There could be a Simon. I recently rewatched Bridgerton, so I feel like I'm biased. There very well could be a Scott. There could be a Richard. Richard's a good name. Richard's, Richard's a white name. It's a good one. Okay, so Jacob and Evan are allegedly the main character, so I guess those don't count. Let me just scroll through the book and see if I find a name of the, the sort that I have named. There are women. There are Matilda and Ruby. What do you mean there are no other characters. Nathaniel. There's a Jane. I love that I only thought of dudes' names. There's a Mike. Why didn't I think of Mike? That's like the whitest name out there. Safe to say, I didn't nail that. Next up, we have got guess how many pages the book has without looking. If you are 25 pages above or below the page count, you can count it as a win. Another angel number. Let's go for 333. Three, three. Ooh, okay. Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the third book in the Dave Abad trilogy. I'm actually reading City of Brass this month, which is very exciting. But if I have had to take any guess. So this is the UK edition. They tend to feel and look a lot bigger than they actually are. So if I had to guess how many pages this book has, I would say it is probably, I'm inclined to say 650. Let us go for 600. I feel like 650 is too much. I feel like this book wouldn't be 650 pages. So I'm going to say 600. Not so confident about it, but we'll say 600. You're kidding. This book is that long? <gasps> There is no way. This book is 752 pages. Shannon, is it really that important? 752? 752? I don't have anything to say to that. Without looking it up, what rating did you give this book? If you choose a book you haven't read yet, pick a new set of numbers. I think this is gonna be rather easy because I don't give like 3.75s or like 3.25. I only really rate books in standard rating so like a whole rating either a one through a five and I rarely do half ratings unless I'm like really torn on a book I feel like this shouldn't be too hard let us go for five three twenty which would take us right on over to this side I have sadly not read the blade itself so we need to choose a new set of numbers let us move on over to this side let's go to shelf number four I see four 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 here so let's just go for that one and so number four would be this one right here and that would be fangs which is a graphic novel I don't talk about this nearly enough. Like I feel I should because I really enjoyed this one and it's literally the graphic novel version of Bride. <laughs> by Allie Hazelwood. It's literally a romance between a werewolf and a vampire. I thought it was a really sweet story. I really, really enjoyed this. And so would highly recommend if you guys are looking for a good graphic novel. And this one, I believe I did rate five stars, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure there was not anything about this that made me go, mm, it's not gonna be a five star. So let's look it up on Goodreads to verify if Mel indeed gave Fangs a five star. I tend to rate graphic novels quite high. So there we go, five star. I tend to rate them pretty high unless there's like something 
been really, really off about them, though not surprised to see the rating there. Without looking, where does this book take place? One for one. Get a life, Chloe Brown. Where are you set? So the author is British, Miss Talia. So is it set in the UK? D do we ever know? That's a good question. I don't know that this says where it's set. So it looks like I'm right in that it's set in the UK, but people don't also know where exactly it is set. I don't think it's mentioned explicitly in the book, though this person does say that Chloe mentioned something about Nottinghamshire, and so they took it as it maybe it was set in Nottingham. So maybe, maybe not, but definitely in the UK, I will assume somewhere because the author themselves are British. Editing Mel here, without looking it up, what are the parents' names? And let me tell you something, if we got a fantasy book, what parents? What parents, baby? But let us see what we get. <laughs> because <laughs> we could get just about any other genre. Let us go for 663. Maybe. We haven't gone to that shelf yet, so let us move on over to this side. We're going right down to the bottom. I'm here, and I'm going for book number three, which is Dealing with Dead Parents. Home Before Dark. <laughs> Is the dad dead? I believe so. If I had to guess, oh, the father's name. Because I can't remember if the mom is mentioned in Home Before Dark. What was the dad's name? I keep thinking of John. Jake. Jacob. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Her parents' names were Jess and Ewan. Definitely wouldn't have guessed that. I didn't even know the mother had a name. I think it's safe to say that I suck at this. Without looking at the hardback, what color is the book underneath the dust jacket? 3314. Let us switch back over to this side. 14. This one doesn't have a dust jacket. So I'm just going to loop again. So we have got The Adventures of Amina al Sirafi. An educated guess. I believe this one's blue. I don't think it's black. So let us see. Okay, yeah. It's a blue hardcover. So we do know some things in this household, apparently. Just not the important ones. Without looking, is there anything on the hardback? Is there a print, an embossing, some sort of design on it? And for that one, let us choose this one. Six, four, nine. So we're going right back on over to the sign. Shanghai Immortal. Ooh, do you have something? I got you recently too. I love that I say recently. I got it back in June of last year. But do you have anything under the dust jacket? Do you have anything on your hardcover? Speak to me. I feel like it doesn't. I'm trying to think about what it could possibly have. Maybe something that is pictured on the cover. So maybe a dragon, maybe of a nine-tailed fox, maybe something, maybe a moon. I don't think it's got anything. I think that's my final answer. Nothing. I have never been more thrilled that nothing underneath the dust jacket. Without taking the dust jacket off, what color is the font on the hardback itself or 319 which again will make us loop but as long as we get as long as we get a book we're good for three right here 19 so we're gonna have to loop so we've got jade fire gold the illumicrate edition what do i think wait was this illumicrate or was this fairy loot let's actually double check because that does make a difference because if it's illumicrate then that means is it oh it's fairy loot fairy loot does color sometimes as they're foiling so that changes everything because illumicrate typically goes silver gold so the hardcover itself i can see it's green we're, we're trying to make an educated guess jade fire gold i would assume they'd use gold on the green that would look pretty but what happens if it's silver it's gotta be gold though it has to be yeah Gold, baby. It's gold. Let's go! Without looking, do the chapters have titles or are they just numbered? So for this one, let us scroll. Let's land here and let us go with 517. So right here and let us go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, a book I have not yet read. I did read the first book in the series, A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. I can't remember if it's, I think it has titles. I think they have titles. Why? YA books tend to have titles. And so I think this one has titles. I also feel like it lends itself for like the cutesy one because of the narratives. And so I'm going to say it's got titles. Let's... It's got numbers. I have never felt so dejected. A Cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow doesn't have numbers. I need to corroborate this information. I love that I say it as if she couldn't have changed the format. It's got even worse numbers. They're not even spelled out. It's just the number. I'm so mad. Without looking, does this book have an award stamp on it? Let us go for 1110, which will take us right into the middle grade shelf. I totally just threw a few books at the back of the shelf. And fetching those is going to be a pain. But I've got Paola Santiago 
on the River of Tears. I don't believe this has an award. Okay, no, it doesn't. Okay, very nice. Without looking, does this book have any author blurbs on the cover? For this one, let us go for 3 to 11. Have we done that yet? I don't think so. 10, 11. King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. Fantasy Romance. I feel like a fellow fantasy romance girly would have blurbed it. Probably alongside the JLAs of the world. I will go with it does have one. I said that so confidently. Oh my god. It literally doesn't have any blurbs, girl. What happened there? Without looking, does the book have a description on the back? So let us scroll and let us land over here on this side. We have got 2516. Oh. Oh no, it's the graphic novel shelf. What did we say? 2516. I mean, it's a graphic novel, so of course it has one. Boom. Uh, I mean, I think this one's kind of like, oh wait, is it? I think it's a quote. Does it count? It's because it has a flap. No. I am miserably failing at this challenge. Somebody said help. Without looking, does this book have an author photo? Let's find out. 1616. That's the classics shell. Am I about to fail it again? Maybe. <laughs> the way I felt so confident because I'm like, they're all dead. <laughs> forget that I have my poetry books and my classics in the same shelf. So we have got The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Kaur. Does it have an author photo? I believe it does. Why wouldn't it? It's a, it's, it's a poetry book. She's quite famous, so it makes me believe that it does have one. How am I failing so miserably? Ruby, where are you? Ruby, show yourself. <laughs> Not a single damn picture. Without looking it up, is the author using a pen name? 369. So let me just scoot on over over to this side and we go right down to the bottom I'm here hello Susanna Clark I believe that is her name. Susanna Clark is the author of The Ladies of Grace. Uh-huh. She lives in England. Susanna, is that your actual name? It is her real name. Without peeking, what POV is this book written in? First or third? If I had you, that would be a turn of events, but I no longer do. So let us go for 4, 5, 11. So we go right back over to this side, to this one. We have got Little Thieves. Definitely third person. Definitely not first. Let me tell you that much. Yeah. She pushes, he pushes, you push, I push, they push, we all push. Third person POV. Without looking, are there any pictures or graphics in this book? Once more, let us find our trusty number over here. 557. Five, Ooh, I actually have no idea. The female of the species. Would this have graphics or pictures? I believe it maybe could, just given the context of the book. So I'm going to say yes. Maybe even just as chapter headers. I think that counts as like an image of a kind. Mm, no, it doesn't. Not even as an interlude. <laughs> if you consider this a graphic, then yes. If not, then no. You'll be the judge of this one. Without looking, does this book have an epilogue? Five, four, three. One, two, three, three. Ooh. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Do you have an epilogue? I love that I keep getting books that I have not read. It's making me look bad. A lot of fantasy books don't have epilogues because it's a continuation. Standalone fantasy books tend to have epilogues. Robin Hobb, are you the type to write an epilogue in? Hmm. I feel like us girly pops tend to have the dramatics of a prologue and an epilogue. Do you have an epilogue? Speak to me, folks. Do you have an epilogue? It's saying that it does. So I'm going to believe it. Do you? Do you not? It does! <laughs> Without looking, does this book have a prologue? 3313. Why do you guys like the number three so much? 3313. 3313. Two people back to back. Children of fallen gods. I believe for the dramatics that it does. I believe it does because it starts out, it does have one. Okay. Because it does start out with like it began with a whisper or whatever. And so it was a very dramatique start. Without looking, is this book signed? I don't have a lot of signed books unless they come from like Lumicrate or Fairy Loot. So the answer is probably going to be no, but let's wait and see. Let us go to 555, five, five, which takes us over here again. You guys kind of like the same numbers. Arcs typically don't come signed, but I have had the off arc that does. AB Poronek, did you sign mine? I don't think so. Okay, yeah, no, it's definitely not signed because this comes straight from the publisher. So they typically, when they come from the publisher, they typically don't. So definitely no signature. No. Without looking, do the page numbers have to sign above? or below them at all. And we go right back to shelf number three. 
three. So let's do three, five, 12. The Bowen season by Samantha Shannon. Does this have designs on the numbers? Oh my God, maybe lines. I feel like a lot of them have like dashes. But aside from that, I don't think it does. I'm afraid to open it and fail miserably again. Okay, oh, it doesn't. There we go. If any lines, but it doesn't. It does have a cute little flower design on the top of the chapter. This next question would have been very fitting for the Bowen season because it does have a design as a header, but do the chapter headers have a design on them? We have got four one sixteen, which is going to make me kind of wrap around till we find one, but right at the top. Oh, we're right back to 16. So we go to a marvelous light. It's an Illumicrate edition. Those tend to be a little bit more special. They tend to have just a little bit extra, but I am inclined to say that it would have some design on the header, but it could also be dry because listen, the book already is doing a whole lot. And so maybe it doesn't have any, but I am inclined just because there are loads of flowers. Maybe it does have a little flower at the chapter title, maybe. Oh my God, it does. Okay, it does. Okay, I was right about that one. Okay, that felt nice. Uh, without looking, are the acknowledgements at the front or the back of the book? 3118. So we go right up here to the contemporary shell. 18. Okay. The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. I believe they should be at the back. Let us find out. Okay. I got scared for a second about the author. Is it the beginning, obviously? And there's an author's note. And okay. Okay, no acknowledgments at the front, which means that the acknowledgments are at the back. I knew I could trust a fellow queer Latina to protect my back on this one and make me win the question. Without looking, what book was this year published? I hope I get an easy one. Five, four, 15. This is actually easy. The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. Came out in 2020. How do I know that? Because I read it the year it came out through an arc. If a girl is not mistaken, which I shouldn't be because that'd be really, really embarrassing. It should be 2020. There we go. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but copyright. I believe it also came out in November if y'all want to be specific. And last but not least, without looking, what year did you read this book? Let us hope that I did read this book and let us go for 3511. Right back on over to this side. Ooh. We've got Ace of Spades by Farida Vike Yumide, and I did read this in 2021. Yes, because I read this the year it came out and this was one of our Patreon book club picks for the time. And that is it for today, friends. That is the How Well Do I Know My Books Challenge. I hope it was fun. I hope it gave you a trip back down memory lane. I know these videos are quite few and far in between nowadays. I think we tend to see a whole lot more of like sit down videos and reading vlogs, kind of like across booktube. And so I hope that you found this somewhat entertaining. If you did, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up down below. Comment down below if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video. How well do you know your shelves? Have you read most of your books? Have you not read most of your book? How would you fare in a challenge like this? I think I'd love to know that because honestly speaking, I failed miserably at this challenge. I thought I would do a lot better than I did, but I think it just kind of went downhill. I'd love to know how you guys would do in a challenge like this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already for more content like this. And if you do want more content from yours truly, I do have a Patreon. It's always linked down below. Helps keep the channel afloat. For April only, you guys can get a seven day free trial before you fully pledge that you can see everything that Patreon has to offer, all of the benefits, the live shows, so that you can get a taste of what it can bring your way before you fully commit to it all. So that is always linked at the top of the description in case you guys want to join us. And if you reach the very end of the video, let us leave a confused emoji, like a side eye, a question mark emoji, <laughs> really staring intensely emoji, anything that could potentially represent my absolute failure at this challenge. You can leave that down in the comments if you reach the very end. I love you guys so, so much, and I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye!